Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the offset function. Now this is a function I use a lot and a lot of the tutorials that I have on my website utilize the offset function, but I never did a post on just how it works specifically. So let's see how you can use the offset function in Excel. So here is the definition of the offset function. It returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a reference. Okay, so the syntax is equals offset. You have a reference point and then rows, columns, height, and width. So how this works is you establish a reference point or an anchor point. Then you say, how many rows down do I want to go from that reference point, and how many columns over do I want to go from that reference point? This establishes your new anchor. Then, how high do I want the range to be, and how wide, how many columns, for example, do I want the range to be? So that's if you want a range that's more than just one cell. Notice that these are in square brackets, so they are optional. If you don't include them, it'll just be one row high and one column wide, as if you want just one cell. But if you want a larger range, you'll need to specify the height and width of that range that will start in the upper left corner of that new anchor point based on your reference, down so many rows, over so many columns. So let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say I want to create a formula here that totals up the values for quarter one only for the eight products I have here. So I'm going to say equals sum tab, and then I'm going to insert the offset function. Now my reference point, I'm going to use cell B4 as my reference, comma. How many rows down do I want to go? Well, I don't want to go any rows down because I want to start with cell B4 to add my value. So I'll say zero, comma. How many columns over do I want to go? Again, I don't want to go any over because I want that to be the first column in the data that I add up. So I'm going to say zero for columns. Now, how high do I want my range to be? Well. From product one to product eight, I want it to be eight rows high. And how many columns wide? Quarter one is three columns wide, so I'm going to put three. I'm going to close my offset function, close my sum function, hit enter, and I get, let me just format that so it's easy to read, and I get 7,593,400. And if I do a quick equals sum and highlight those 24 values, I get 7,593,400. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. So again, here's the formula. I use the offset function. I used B4 as my reference point. I went down zero rows, over zero columns, made it eight rows high, three columns wide, and it added the values I want. Now, that's a very static way of doing it, but we can take something like this and make it more dynamic so it will automatically update the range that we want based on certain criteria. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is just for this purpose, I'm gonna lock my reference point and make it an absolute cell reference because I wanna copy this formula down and show you how we can make this far more dynamic. So the first thing is, again, establish our reference point, which we're going to leave as B4. And since I always want to sum all the products here, I'm going to leave the number of rows as zero. The number of columns, though, let's say we want to do quarter two or quarter three or quarter four. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change that second zero here to be a match function. And what we're going to match is the selection that I have in a drop down box here, C4, comma, in this array here. And I'm going to lock that F4, comma, and my match type is going to be zero. I'm going to close my match function 
but I'm going to subtract 1 from that, and you'll see what happens in a minute. I'm going to hit Enter, and notice I have the same scenario here. And the reason I put a minus 1 is, if we look at the match function, and I hit F9, you'll see it makes it a 1. And I don't want to take my reference point and go over 1. I want to leave it where it is. So that's why I have a minus 1, so it'll take me back 1 to get to the first item within that range. Same thing if I change this to quarter 2. Again, if I look at my formula, the match function says F9 to go over 4. So I start here, I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, but I need to back that up 1 so I get to the beginning of quarter 2. So now I made that quarter aspect or the number of column over dynamic. The next uh, part of the formula is 8, which is how high do I want it to be. Well, I can change that to be a count function, which counts the number of cells in the range that contain numbers. And I can just say, I'll look at column B. And I hit Enter. And again, it keeps the same because count of column B, if I highlight that and hit 9, or hit F9, it becomes an 8. So this way, if I add another row, it will expand my range to another value. So for example, if I put here product 9, and if I copy these values down, notice my amount changes because if I look at my formula now, and I look at the count of column B, hit F9, it's now a 9 instead of an 8. So it's automatically adjusted for those values. The last thing here is 3. I have it as 3 columns wide. So the next thing we can do is make the number of columns wide dynamic. So I can change this column 3 maybe to a count if function. And my range is going to be this range here. And my criteria will be whatever I have selected in cell C14. I'll close that, hit Enter, and again, it maintains the same value as if I had a 3 there because it's going to count how many times Q1 or Q2 or etc. appears within that range. So now I've taken a simple formula that I hard-coded some values in in the offset function, and I've made it more dynamic. So now any time I change the quarter that I want to sum, it automatically adjusts that. Or if I add or delete any products, it will automatically adjust that too. So that's how you can use the offset function in Excel. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day, and happy excelling.